I hope you enjoyed your dinner and you had a chance to talk about some of the very compelling stories that we've heard this, thus far. So we're going to turn now to the presentation of our Freeing Voices Changing Lives Award. The American Institute of Stuttering presents this award to individuals who have excelled in their chosen careers without allowing their stuttering to hold them back. And tonight, we are so privileged to honor a man who has not only excelled in his career, but has dedicated his life to elevating and delivering first-rate health care, particularly for the most vulnerable people in our community. Though born and raised in Nigeria, Dr. Philip Azua has worked and lived in New York through most of his career and devoted his attention to medical issues unique to our city. He has been a pediatrician in the South Bronx, a dedicated researcher focusing on solving children's issues, a professor and university chairman of pediatrics at Albert Einstein College, College of Medicine and the physician in chief of Children's Hospital at Montefiore. Today, Dr. Azua helms one of the most important medical centers in the country. And as CEO and the president of Montefiore Einstein, he oversees Albert Einstein College of Medicine, Montefiore's 13 hospitals, 300 ambulatory sites, and 7.5 million patient encounters per year. His leadership style, wearing all of his many hats, is gracious and thoughtful, and above all, inspirational. Dr. Oazo is not only a brilliant physician, academic, researcher, professor, and leader, but a fun fact, he's also an Emmy Award winner. It's true. <laughs> For his work on television on behalf of Montefiore. That's not the greatest achievement, I'm just saying it's a great fun fact, you know. Um, <laughs> Okay, please welcome our 2023 Freeing Voices Changing Lives Award recipient, Dr. Philip Oswa. Thank you, thank you so much. Thanks, Emily. Thanks to uh, everyone involved with AIS. Uh, my wonderful friends, the Manitarian family, thank you for being here. My family, my wife, Dr. Tess Oswa, Phoebe Piers, our, our children, thank you all for being here. The year was 1989. You arrive as a young immigrant doctor who started fairly obviously as a child, and you arrive in New York to train at this big institution, this hospital. And in your first month, you encounter two people a supervising male doctor who went out of his way to draw unflattering attention to any word upon which you stuttered. It was a sort of a sport for him. And you also encounter a female supervising doctor who at the end of the, who barely spoke to you all month long and that at the end of the month writes your evaluation and says you are unqualified, unintelligent, unworthy to be in that institution. And you're sure that it's a mistake because among other things, you always wore a shirt and a tie and trousers and polished shoes and a starched white coat and she had rated you on every attribute on a scale of zero to ten she rated you a zero including on appearance and so you're thinking well my intellect may not be up to 
aha, but I looked sharp, I thought. <laughs> And so, you know, you go to see her, expecting that when you walked in, she would say, oops, this was an error, and she said, no, no, it's you. And you said, well, could you please tell me what I could do to get better? In particular, what could I do to appear better? And she says, I don't know. The other reason that you thought it was a mistake is because Many people, although your name is Philip, many people call you Peter. Because there was one other, there was only one other trainee in the, in the place who shared your heritage. And his name was Peter. So people called, and although you didn't think you looked anything alike, they called you Peter. So, your goal that first year was to simply be called by your name, was to perform with enough excellence and distinction that they would call you by your name. You think about Elizabeth Barrett Browning, 1845, who wrote, yes, call me by my pet name. Let me hear the name I used to run at when a child from innocent play and leave the cowslips pile to glance up in some face that proved me dear with the look of its eyes. I miss the clear fond voices which being drawn and reconciled to the music of heavens undefiled call me no longer. You're 6,000 miles from home and you miss the voices that called you by your own name. Thirteen years later, you enter the elevator in the hospital going up to the 10th floor to visit a patient. There's only one other person in the lift, and a meek voice says, Good morning, Dr. Oswa. Yes, it's our friend that supervising doctor who rated you in your first month. She calls you by your name, but not your first name. She calls you out of deference and respect by your last name formally. Because you still wear the starched white coat, but now on your coat it says professor and university chairman. And underneath it, it says physician in chief. You're now the head of the department. And as you ride up, you can see her squeezing herself into the corner, trying to disappear. And you can literally smell the fear. Uh, and you can hear her thinking, I wonder if he remembers. <laughs> because you, you've never said anything about it since. But now, 10,000 doctors work for you. When you walk into the ER now, everybody stands up, including the male doctor who mocked you. And you, you, you've learned over time and you've embraced, embraced the stutter because you realized that it was a gift. It was a gift that sharpened your listening and deepened your empathy and deepened your sensitivity and deepened your humanity and ensured your humility. And so even the one that mocked you stands up now when you walk into the room. 
and you think about the 13th century Persian mystic, Rumi, who said, you've seen a herd of goats going down to the river. The lame and dreamy goat brings up the rear. There are worried faces about that one, but now they're laughing because look, as they return, that one is the leader. There are many different ways of knowing the lame goat kind has branches that trace back to the roots of presence. Learn from the lame goats and lead the herd home.